Hi everyone, my name is Lizzie Simmons. I am an ex-elite swimmer. I've been lucky enough to compete for Great Britain for the best part of 15 years, including two amazing Olympic Games, the Beijing Olympics in 2008 and the London Olympics in 2012. Today I'm going to talk about motivation and some of the things that I think we can be doing to increase our motivation during the current situation. Before we get started, a big thank you to Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and also to Teamed Up for supporting us all through this really difficult time. Now, athletes can seem to have this weird natural predisposition towards motivated behaviour, galvanised by a passion to continually improve themselves in the quest for ultimate dominance over their competitors. Now, yes, there are times where this drive is reduced in sports people. Significant injury is a common example. The season after an Olympic Games or another major tour tournament is notoriously hard to slog through. But on the whole, athletes appear to have an almost superhuman ability to self-motivate. And I think this can lead to onlookers feeling unable to relate. After retiring from elite sport myself, I assumed somewhat naively that I wouldn't struggle with motivation once I was out in the real world either. Um, but it turned out that a lack of drive and energy was a very, very real experience for me over the first six months um, after retiring. And I realised that actually I was no different to anybody else. I was also struggling to set new goals, to feel motivated about them. I struggled to even do simple things like get myself to exercise and eat healthily. And I started thinking, if motivation isn't innate, then that means that it was a product of my goals, my identity and my environment. Athletes are not born with a superhuman ability to motivate themselves, but they have a system in place that allows them to remain motivated over long periods of time. Now, re-engineering some of these practices was integral to me regaining motivation when I lost direction and purpose after retirement. What I learned during the process was that there are some pretty simple ways that everyone can increase their motivation, even during a challenging time like the situation that we're currently in with the coronavirus restrictions, when some of us are feeling a little bit flat. So let's take a look at a motivation theory called self-determination theory. Now, this theory states that human beings need three really, really important things in order to feel driven. Those things are autonomy, competence and relatedness. Now, they seem a little bit abstract, so let's break them down a bit further and take a closer look. Autonomy is our sense of control over the direction of our career, the tasks we're doing, the partners we choose, what we do with our social life and our downtime. Autonomy changes as we grow older. Kids obviously don't have much control over what they're doing. But by the time we become adults, autonomy is a crucial component of motivation theory. Without it, we run the risk of feeling disengaged from what we're doing. Competence is our belief in our skill set, our confidence that we can complete the tasks we're being asked to do. Again, this increases throughout our youth and it can also go up and down in adulthood. For example, when we change jobs and we have to acquire a whole new skill set. Whilst challenge is also important for motivation, most people need to feel confident in their ability in order to feel driven towards a task. Otherwise, we feel ineffective and we lose drive. Relatedness is our connection with others and with our higher purpose. Again, this really varies from person to person, but for the majority of us, a sense of belonging and connectedness is really, really important. Without relatedness, we run the risk of feeling aimless. Now, of course, everyone is different. So the ranking of importance for these three components differ significantly for individuals, but most of us need a balance of the three. Now, interestingly, if you think to a time in your career when you lacked motivation, it's likely that one or more of these components were out of balance. For example, if you were asked to do a task that was way too easy or way too hard, then your competence was being questioned. If you had no direction or control over what you were doing, then your autonomy was being undermined. Or if you were part of a team that was disconnected or had poor dynamic, then your relatedness was being impacted. So let's take a closer look at how these components have been affected by the recent situation with coronavirus. Starting with autonomy. 
when we no longer have the same control over our lives that we're familiar with. We can't just go out whenever we like, we can't go to the gym anymore, we can't hug our family or our friends unless we live with them. Even when we go to the supermarket, something as simple as that, we have to stay a certain distance away from everywhere, everyone else. We can't go to the office, we're not visiting clients, and we can't even grab a coffee with our colleagues or go for an after work drink. So our sense of autonomy has been massively impacted by the current situation. Moving on to competence, well, our skill set technically hasn't changed. We're still just as good at sales pitches, presentations, spreadsheets, negotiations as we were a month ago. But the context under which we're being asked to perform has changed significantly. The majority of us are now working from home. So even if technically you're doing exactly the same tasks as you usually do, you're having to perform them via technology now from your home environment. So this component has also been impacted, not because we no longer believe in our skill set, but because we're unfamiliar with the environment under which we're being asked to perform. So the third component, relatedness. Now, this is an obvious one. With the restrictions on movement in place, we're seeing a lot less of our team, of our colleagues, our bosses, um, and even our friends. And many of us have replaced this physical contact with virtual meetings, which is great, but it's much more difficult for us to spontaneously grab a coffee or some lunch nowadays, or just pop into a colleague's office and ask a question or run something by them or ask for guidance. Virtual calls also require a lot more cognitive energy, so a day on Zoom or Skype can leave us feeling much more exhausted than a day in the office would. So if we, need, if we all need a balance of autonomy, competence and relatedness in order to feel motivated, and I've just explained how significantly those three things have been impacted, then is it any surprise that some of us are feeling a little bit flat at the moment, even if on the surface our job hasn't changed that drastically? There are a number of things that we can do if we're feeling low on motivation at the moment. And the first tip from me is to go easy on yourself. This is a really strange time for all of us. And there'll be a number of reasons why you might not be feeling as driven as usual. The great news is there are, there are lots of things that we can do to change that. But I think the first step is just to take the pressure off trying to force yourself to feel exactly like you normally do in the morning. We can also address the three components of motivation. So let's start with autonomy. The reality is that most of us don't have control over the current situation, and that might not change anytime soon. We'll be allowed to travel again only when the government says so. We'll be allowed to high five our mates again or go to the gym only when someone else declares it safe. Now, that lack of control can easily lead to feeling overwhelmed, but the key is to focus on what you can control. In sport, we have a really good saying, control the controllables. It means that it's wasted energy and effort to be flapping or stressing or worrying about the stuff we can't control. And this message applies now more than ever. What are the things that you can control within your current context? Routine is one of those things. Attitude is another. Application to tasks and challenges, learning, exercise, mental health, nutrition. There is still a huge number of controllables for each of us. So accept that the bigger picture is out of your control for the time being and focus in on the stuff you do have autonomy over. Moving on to competence. Now, most of us feel good about ourselves when we get feedback that we're progressing, improving or moving forward. Even if our ability um, in a skill is relatively low, we feel a huge amount of confidence to know that we're going in the right direction. Right now, it's even more important that we orchestrate our environment in a way that we get some of that feedback. So take a look at the skills that are important for your job. Could you do some training or an online course that will give you that sense of progression? Can you reach out to someone, a, a colleague, a boss, and ask them for some direction on a problem that you've been sitting on for a while? The reality is that most of us have a bit more time on our hands at the moment. So use the time that you'd usually spend commuting or going to the office to learn a new skill or advance a skill that you already have. Another way to do this is to start learning something away from the working environment, whether it's juggling, a language, yoga, watercolours, it doesn't matter. The key is to begin recreating your framework of confidence in this new context. You still need challenge. You still need to feel like you're learning. You still need to get feedback that you're good at things. You're just doing it in a different environment. 
So the third component, relatedness. We're obviously significantly restricted on physical contact, but most of us have our meetings and working interactions replaced by virtual calls and video conferencing. Sound enough? Not necessarily. Part of us feeling connected means checking in, even in a social manner, with our colleagues and with our team. Now, this might happen in an informal way in an office, a quick chat by the coffee machine or just passing each other in the hallway. It might seem a little bit artificial, a bit inorganic to do it right now, but it's so important for us to replicate these informal catch ups, especially if you're the kind of person who gets their energy from others. So schedule some virtual coffee machine catch ups or lunches with your team. This might end up being just a social space, which isn't a bad thing. But it might also lead to people chatting through problems and challenges and lead to unofficial problem solving and team building, which is super, super important. So now that we've got an awareness of how to get our balance back when it comes to motivation, let's take a look at the importance of goals. When it comes to motivation, I mentioned earlier how I'd made an assumption that athletes were just a little bit different to the rest that we just had an innate ability to maintain that motivation even through the most gruelling sessions or hard seasons. Because let's be realistic here, it's easy to see how an athlete can be motivated when they have their eyes on the prize, when they're approaching a big competition such as the Olympic Games, when, they're, you know, when they've got a huge dream or a big goal in mind. But the reality is that the majority of our training as an athlete was really, really tough. 60 kilometres of swimming per week kind of tough. Blood, sweat and tears, week in, week out, through the darkest winters, Christmas Eves, Boxing Days, New Year's Eves, birthdays, we just kept going. So how do athletes stay motivated through the really tough stuff? The first thing is that we have a really, really clear picture of what our goals are. This might seem obvious, of course, if we're going for Olympic glory or the Tour de France podium or the Wimbledon champion then we're going to have goals that we're aiming towards. But once we've got that bigger picture that might be years away from fruition, athletes are incredibly good at creating small process goals. For any one of my end of season goals, I used to have around 60 process goals, small steps that I could take to increase my chances of achieving that goal. These might be to do with nutrition, recovery, strength, speed, technique, tactical goals. Every day I had this huge range of things to work on, which could seem daunting for some people, but for me it was really, really exciting. I knew that improving any one of those things took me one step closer to achieving my goal. Now ask most people what they're aiming towards in life and they'll either give you a half-hearted depiction of the next rung of the ladder in their chosen career or no answer at all. And it sounds like a really simple fix, but having a clearly defined objective and connecting back with your purpose as an individual and as a team is absolutely crucial to maintaining motivation. Right now, the reality is that our goalposts might have shifted. Even in the sporting world, athletes who are gearing up to a summer of competition are now faced with an unprecedented postponement of an Olympic Games and the challenges that that brings to their season. Whilst you might not have an Olympic Games on the horizon, some of the things that you were probably aiming towards might have also been adjusted, postponed or cancelled. So again, let's revisit the control the controllables phrase here. What goals do you have control over right now? Let's focus in on those. What are the steps that you need to take in order to achieve those goals? What are the small processes that you need in place? It's also a great time to be looking at new opportunities that you might, might not have had time for before. I'm going to give some closer insight into goal setting for elite performance during another session, but make sure that you're identifying the areas in which you can still make improvements, even during these challenging circumstances. The second key thing that came to mind was that whilst athletes have these incredibly clear goals, Goals aren't always enough to maintain momentum and motivation, especially when things get really tough. So this had me thinking about identity and values and the powerful but often unrecognised role that they play. The reason that athletes push, push themselves through the awful winter training season, work so hard that they cry and get up again and again, even after losses and failures and setbacks and poor seasons, is that they identify as someone who values above all else 
the quest for personal mastery. This means that sportsmen and women get a real buzz out of pushing themselves, even when the training session is slow or tired or heavy, because we know that we're testing the boundaries of our potential. Now, obviously, extreme physical endeavour doesn't get everyone's juices flowing, but it is important to decide the kind of person that you want to be, especially during the current period of time, and then make a point of proving that to yourself each day. If you can link your values to the role you're playing at work and at home, kind of the same thing at the moment, then you can buy into your tasks at a much deeper level than merely ticking things off a to-do list. So to summarise, make sure that you're still getting the balance of autonomy, competence and relatedness that you need. You might have to put some extra effort in to recreate some of these components. Secondly, get really, really clear on your goals, even if they've changed quite significantly from what they were a month ago. Don't underestimate the power that your identity plays when it comes to feeling motivated. Who do you want to be during these challenging times? Not just what do I want to achieve? Connecting with your purpose, both individually and a team, can really, really help increase motivation. And remember that these are really unusual times. So if you need some extra support, then do reach out to other people. Another big thank you to Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management and to Teamed Up for supporting us through these strange times. And remember, we can do this.